Okay, so in this video we're going to have a look at pie charts. Now the great thing about a pie chart, and we are going to be looking at this in a non-calculator method, but the great thing about a pie chart is that all of the numbers in the question that we're going to have a look at need to add up to 360. We know that around a point in a circle all the angles add up to 360, so that in order for our pie chart to work it has to add up to that number. So if we look at our question, we're going to find the numbers that are associated with our question. We're going to get the numbers to add up to 360, and then we're going to draw it using our protractor. So we're going to run through all of that. So I've got a question for you to practice and one final question for us to have a look at, but it's going to be a relatively quick video looking at drawing pie charts. So this question here says the table gives information about the languages studied by a group of Year 11 students, and it says that 30 study French, 37 study German, and 53 study Spanish, and it says draw an accurate pie chart for this information. So the first thing we want to do is add up all these numbers. So if we add up 30, 37, and 53, let's have a look, that adds up to 120. And I always just write that down over here, somewhere near the table, just so I know what the total is, and the total there is 120. So in order to get this to 360, either you just have to think about that in your head, what do you multiply 120 by to get to 360, or we could just do 360 and divide that by the total there, which is 120. So 360 divided by 120 is 3, meaning that we're going to have to multiply all of these by 3 to get the angle in each, in each uh, portion of the pie chart. So if we multiply them all by 3, and we'll just write times 3 next to them all, there we go, times 3 times 3 times 3, that would mean that 30 would become 90 degrees, and these are our angles now. We would have 37 times 3, which would be 111, so that would be 111 degrees, which is a bit of an awkward one to draw, and 53 times 3 would be 159, so that is 159 degrees. Now that is the main bit of our working out now. We know all of the angles that we need to draw, we just actually need to draw them on correctly. So when you've got your pie chart drawn like this, if it's given to you, if not you're going to have to use a compass just to draw a circle. And If you're making notes on this I would def definitely do that, just get your compass, draw a nice circle, just make sure that you know where the centre of that circle is so that you can draw this nice straight line going up so you have a place to start from. So let's start with drawing on this French one which is 90 degrees and we can put them all in at the same time but let's do the first one. So get your protractor, pull it over the top of the pie chart, make sure that little crosshair in the middle is right on the centre and there we go, I'll just do that really nice and carefully. And then you also want to rotate your protractor so that the guideline where it starts at zero is lined up with the line that you're starting from which is the one that's vertical. So there we go, that's nicely lined up. So I want to mark on 90 degrees, so I'm just going to mark the 90 degrees over there, there we go, pull your protractor out of the way, and then with a ruler and a pencil from that central point draw a nice line over to that, and you can obviously do it a little bit shorter just to the edge of the pie chart, and there we go, that's your 90 degree angle. Now you can move on to the next one, um, but before you do, what I tend to do is I normally tend to label that section, so I'm just going to put French in there. So I'll put French in, and I'll also put the degrees in there, 90 degrees. You could also put the 30 in there as well, but just to keep it a little bit simpler on the screen, I'm just going to leave it as French with the 90 degrees. Okay, so putting your protractor back onto the centre. Now we just want to rotate the protractor around so that the zero is lined up with our new line, so we can carry on from that point. And again, I'm using the outside numbers. Uh, and now we need to do 111 degrees, so past the 90, 110, 111 is just past that, and you're going to have to just get it as accurate as you can. There we go, there's 111 for me. Again, just pull that protractor out of the way, and we can draw in a nice straight line again from the center. So from the center, ruler and a pencil, join it up. I'm just going to shorten it a little bit. There we go, you can do that a little bit easier when it's not on, to, on, on a screen, but yeah, there we go. Using your ruler and a pencil, I'm just going to label that, so that would be German. And that was 111 degrees. There we go. And the last part of the pie chart here, which as we only have one left, is Spanish. So we'll label that as Spanish. And that is 159 degrees. A good bit of practice here that you should do is you should stick your protractor on, just measure that final angle there. So I'm going to flip it around the other way, measure to see if that's 159. Might be a little difficult for you to see on the screen there, but that comes out as around 159 for me. So I'm happy with that. It's an accurate pie chart. All of the angles match up to what I wanted them to. And there we go, there's your pie chart. 
Okay, so that's how you go about drawing it. That's how you get the angles. Remember, they've got to add up to 360. So that bit of working out there where I added up the total and did 360 divided by that total allowed me to see what I needed to multiply all those numbers by so that they all added up. And another good bit of practice that you could do is take those three numbers and just add them up and you can actually see 159, 111 and 90 do all add up to 360. So we've definitely got it right. Okay, so there we go, that's how you're going to do it. I've got one for you to have a go at, so let's have a look at that one now. Okay, so here's your question. So if you are comfortable drawing a pie chart and using a protractor, then really all you need to practice here is just getting those correct angles. Although if you have got a compass with you and you can draw a circle and you've got your protractor on you, then do feel free to have a go at drawing the pie chart as well. Um, but otherwise, pause the video there, have a go at this one, and we'll go for the answer in a sec. Okay, so let's have a look then. So for this one here, we just need to add up what we've got. So 30, 34 and 26. Now they add up to 90. So at the moment, we've got a total of 90. Now, what do we need to multiply those by? Well, we can work that out by doing 360 divided by 90, which comes out as four. So we need to multiply them all by four. So again, if I'm just gonna put times four next to all of these, just to remind myself to multiply them all, times four times four times four. So 34 times by four, let's just work that out on a calculator just to speed this up, 136, 26 times four, obviously just take your time with these, 104, and 30 times four is 120. Right, there we go, so there's our three angles. So if you've got those angles, then you should be pretty well set for drawing pie charts now. Um, but let's just plot that, or draw that onto our pie chart. So line it up with the center, go to 136 degrees, so 90 on the outside, 110, 120, 130, and just a little bit past the five, 136 just there. There we go, join that up with a nice straight line. I'll label that in a second. And then back to the center, and we need to measure out the 104 degrees. So I'll line that up with my pink line and we want 104 degrees, so past the 90, 104, just there. And there we go. We'll join that last line up. And there we go. And then obviously just not forgetting to label them all. So you've got French. There we go, we have got 136 degrees in there. We had German. There we go, with 104 degrees, and also Spanish, with 120 degrees. There we go. Right, so there we go, there's your pie chart. Well then if you've got all those angles and you're able to draw that as well, um, that pretty much is all that you need to know in order, in order for actually drawing them, but there is another question that you could be asked. So we're gonna have a look at one more question. That is gonna be our last one before we finish, so we just need to discuss that, and that will be the end of pie charts. So let's have a look at that one now. Okay, so let's have a read through this question. It says the table gives the information about the colours of cars parked in car park A. And then we've got four different colours for different cars there. And it says draw an accurate pie chart for this information. It then says the pie chart below shows the information about the colours of cars parked in car park B. Josh says there were more silver cars parked in car park B than car park A. And is Josh correct? Explain your answer. Well, we actually need to go about drawing our pie chart first. So we, if we draw our pie chart on the left, then can we, and here's the question, can we make a comparison between the two? Can we compare those two silver sections? That's what we're going to have a look towards in this question. So feel free to have a go at this question and pause it. Have a go at thinking about whether we can actually make that comparison with the pie charts. And we will go with the answer in just a second. Right, okay, so if we go about drawing this then, now at the moment, this is quite a tricky one because if you add all of those up, they add up to 240. So if they add up to 240, that would be quite a nasty one to do without a calculator. So if you were to do 360 divided by 240, what do you actually get as your answer? Because that's not a very nice one to do without a calculator, so how would we approach that? Well, I would say the best way to approach that would be to simplify the fraction if you didn't have a calculator. Obviously, if you do, then that's nice and simple. You can just type it into your calculator. But if we simplify this, we get 36 over 24, and then simplifying that again, maybe, we could divide the top and bottom by six, 
Again, you might spot bigger numbers that go in, but let's just simplify it. So that would become six over four. And then maybe you could divide the top and bottom by two, which would be three over two. All right, so we're getting there. And three over two is one and a half. So there we go. This means we actually have to times all of these numbers by 1.5, which isn't very nice. So we're gonna times these by 1.5. So multiplying them by 1.5, again, not very nice without a calculator. There we go, if I could actually write the little dot in. There we go. So if we times them by 1.5, now that's not very nice at all because 105 times 1.5 is going to come out as a decimal. So if we're going to do that, then we get the answer. And again, you can work this out doing some multiplication. Remember, when you times by 1.5, you can just halve it and add the half on. So half of 105 is 52.5. And if you add that on, you get 157.5 degrees okay we'll have a look at that in a sec the next one we've got 25 half of 25 is 12.5 add it on is 37.5 degrees not very nice again I see these are all odd numbers so it's going to happen for all of them um, half of 57 and add it on again you can take your time just multiplying this out using your normal method for multiplying decimals though and that comes out as 85.5 degrees and the last one there is 53, so 53 times 1.5, again, it's taking your time with that, comes out as 79.5 degrees, there we go. Right, so they've all come out as a 0.5. Now that's not too bad, we can try and do this as best as we can. Again, it says draw it as, you know, draw an accurate pie chart, but we can only draw it as accurate as we can, and there is about a one to two degree allowance either side on the exam because obviously some of these are quite difficult to plot, particularly this one where there's a 0.5. Now what we could do is you could, you could round some of them up, some of them down, but then it's not gonna be quite as accurate. So it's best that we just try and draw this as accurately as possible. So if we just go for it and see how accurate we can make it, again, this is quite a tricky one because the pie chart's quite small on my screen so that I could fit it all on for you. Um, but let me try and do it as accurately as I can. So the 157.5, is all the way down and off my screen a little bit so let's see if i can 155 7.5 is around about there okay so if i draw that straight line in there's the 157.5 and then i'll bring it back let's twist it round and we've got 37.5 to go from that new one there we go, very tricky when there's a lot on the screen. 37.5 is here, so that's quite a small one. There we go, just between the 137 and 138. And that is there. And then bringing it back on. Now what's the next angle? 85.5. Okay, just about line that up. Always got to make it as perfect as you can. So 85.5 goes up to, let's have a look, 85.5, just between those two, just about fit that in. And join that up. And then thankfully the last one's done for us. Okay, so there, right, not the easiest of ones to draw that one, but let's put these pieces in. So we have black here, which was um, 157.5 degrees. I'm probably not going to be able to fit these all in. White, which was 37.5 degrees, just about fit that in. We've got silver, which was 85.5 degrees. And then the last one there, which was red, which was 79.5 degrees. There we go. Now, just as a little pointer here, that is probably a much harder one than you would have to do, um, obviously, without a calculator. It'd be much more likely, if it was a non-calculator question, that they would all be even numbers, so they wouldn't get these 0.5s. But I just want to highlight to you that this could happen. You could get a 0.5 in there, and, it, you know, it's nothing to be worried about if that does happen. You just try and draw it as accurately as you can. But as I said, much more likely that you are going to get one um, that has nice whole numbers in there. But there we go, that pie chart is drawn. Now onto this part B, it says there were more silver cars parked in car park B than car park A. Well, you can see obviously the silver section is only 85.5 degrees in our pie chart. And on this pie chart, the silver section is obviously quite large. It's almost half the amount. So 
logically you would say yeah there's more silver cars parked in car park B but in terms of this question the answer is no Josh is not correct if we think about our car park which had 240 cars in well out of those 57 were silver now if this car park here that is shown in the second one maybe there's only 20 cars parked in that car park and if there was only 20 cars as an example let's just imagine that there's only 20 cars here then just less than half I don't know maybe silver would only be nine cars so nine cars in comparison to our 57 cars is clearly not as many, is it? So we don't know. Unless we know the amount of numbers, uh, that seems strange saying it like that, unless we know the actual numbers behind the pie chart, then we can't make any comparisons. So we would have to say no, Josh is not correct, because we don't know any of the numbers behind the pie chart. We don't know how many cars are actually parked in there, so we can't make, an exa we can't make um, a comparison. A pie chart only shows proportion. Okay, so it doesn't show the actual amount within each section. So our answer would be no, we can never compare pie charts like this unless we have the numbers. Okay, so there we go, that was the last question there, something different to talk about in terms of the pie chart, and I hope that was useful and helpful. If it was, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I'll see you for the next video.